Good morning to all of you. Hope you are having a great time so far for the next 30 minutes. Myself, Pankaj, and my colleagues Neha and Lulu are going to talk about financial transaction analysis using graph database and visualization. We are representing Intuit. Intuit is having products in consumer finance domain. Some of the Intuit's offerings are TurboTax, QuickBooks, and Mint. The data for today's talk, we'll be talking about why financial management is so important, what do we mean by financial transaction, and why we are using graph databases for financial transaction data, then graph data model and visualization using the financial transaction data. Then we will also be showing the user spending packing model based on the financial transactions. And then also visualizations of the spendings, as well as in the end, it will be the summary section. Why is financial management so important? Financial transactions are an indispensable part of our day-to-day -day life. Individuals and families need to actively manage the income and spending to ensure the financial stability. Understanding spending patterns can help people make better spending decisions. But reaching that understanding from the raw data is difficult for many consumers just by looking at their bank statements. And another reason for have why we think that financial management is so important is people think about retirement, planning for the retirement, as well as paying for their college tuition kids fees, as well as buying their dreams like cars and houses. So these assets need money and a proper financial management. So let's look what do we mean by financial transaction. If there is an exchange of a currency between a buyer and a seller, it is defined as a financial transaction. For, over here, we have an example of a financial transaction that a customer has performed using the mer Macy's Merchant and the financial amount. Uh, so every financial transaction has following properties associated with it. That is the amount of transaction, date, time, and location, as well as the type. What do we mean by a type? A type can be either a credit, debit, or it can be a loan or a mortgage. And based on these properties, of a category of transaction is determined. The transaction can be further classified as a shopping, food, or dining, travel. Let's say if a consumer goes to a restaurant, orders some food, and pays the bill, that particular transaction would be classified as food and dining. On the right hand side, we see the different categories of a transaction. So possibly a transaction would be classified into one of these categories. And now the question is about why graph databases? Financial transactions are a semi-supervised type of data. It's hierarchical data type of data. And there exists a relationship between consumers and merchants when they perform a financial transaction. In order to better represent and understand the relationship, graph database are one of the effective ways as relationships are the first class citizen in graph databases. For example, if a user shops at Costco, Walmart, or Target, it shows that there is a relationship that exists between the user and the merchant. And that particular relationship can be represented very well in graph databases. So now let's look at an example <coughs> where we try to model a simple example on, on financial transaction data using the relational versus the graph approach. So in the relational model, we'll see that there are three different tables. First one is the buyer table, which is going to have information about the users. The second one is going to be the seller or the merchants table, which is going to have information about the merchants. And the third is the relationship that exists where a buyer buys an item from a merchant. So every node has property. For example, if the user, we have the user attributes like the name, address, and other details. Uh, this is something similar when we are having a merchant node where we have the name of the merchant, location, and uh, contact details. So for example, the relationship that would exist is a user buys an atom or shops at a particular merchant. So on the right hand side, we can see that how it's represented. represented. 
So let's stay tuned for the further talk because my colleague Neha will dive deeper into representing the financial transactions using the graph databases and for the graph DB we are primarily using Neo4j in this case. So I would like to ask Neha to continue the rest. Thanks. Hello everyone. So uh, let's dive a little bit deeper into the graph model. So let's take a step back and think about what kind of merchants are we connected with in a day-to-day -day life. So we are connected with, like we all love to drink coffee, so Starbucks, there are merchants like Walmart, there are merchants like Safeway, so those are very you know, frequently visited merchants that we deal with in our day-to-day -day life. So in order to understand how a user perceives their spending or how a user is connected with different kinds of merchants, we thought of, okay, let's build that model in a, in a Neo4j technology, in a graph database model, to see that pattern. So we call it merchant vector. So merchant vector is nothing but it's a list of merchants that a user is connected with or frequently visits. If you look at it in this example, so the node in pink is a user node. And this user is connected with different merchants over here in red. So if you can see Forever 21, Nine West, then there is something for 7-Eleven, then there are merchants like Whole Foods. So this, this is pretty much related with our day-to-day -day spending. Like these merchants are very common merchants. And the edges, if you see in between like user node and the merchant node, this is shops app that even Tom which covered in the last slide. So this edge contains some metadata, meta information, like how frequently this user has been visiting to this merchant. Frequency of the visit, we are also storing like the amount being spent on these merchants by this user. So looking at this particular example, so it's this user has a very diverse spending pattern. Like it's pretty much spread out to all sorts of categories. So let's look into what we mean by category in the next slide. So as Pankaj talked about in the previous slides, like every financial transaction can be further classified into different categories and the subcategories. So taking this as the example, so the pink node is again the same user node, the merchants are in the red nodes, and then there, is a, there are other blue nodes which denotes the subcategories. So for example, if I say iTunes, so iTunes is a music service, and a music service can be further extended into a parent class which is entertainment. And so you can see like shopping, health and business, sorry, health and fitness, shopping, entertainment, auto transport, home, all these sorts of categories are the parent category. And there is a relation from user to that parent category to understand his complete spending pattern. So the user shops at these merchants. These merchants belong to some subcategories, and these subcategories are actually sub a children of the parent categories. So it's very easy for, to get information about this particular user's spending pattern just by looking at this graph. So we can see which user, which merchants this user goes to, what kind of spending he is doing, and what kind of merchants he is using. And maybe we can derive insight like whether someone is a female or a male, or like someone is married or unmarried. So those kind of information maybe we can derive from this model. So the, the beauty of a graph model is that we can go from both the directions. So the directions are like, we can go from user and see which merchant that user goes to and then go back and map it to the parent category. Or we can start from the parent category and drill down to the users, like how many users are there. And in this particular example, you can see there is only one user, but if suppose there, is like, there, there are more pink nodes, there are a lot of users, and we can derive more information, like which are the uh, merchants which is frequently visited by the, our users. So that way we can derive a lot of insights. So I have some examples in the following slides. So this is one of the examples to find out who is performing, like what are the merchants that users are visiting in clothing domain. Just by using simple uh, cipher query language that Neo4j provides, so we can easily find out and see that two of the users goes to Nordstrom and two of the users is using H&M. So uh, in, in this example, so we can write queries like this and put a subcategory like clothing and we can derive like how the user is uh, interacting with the customer, uh, with the merchants and vice versa. So the relationship that I talked in the last slide, you can see in the statement return. So user shops at the merchant, which are denoted by M, 
then it belongs to a subcategory which is S, and it belongs to a parent category which is a subcategory of. This is a further example of uh, finding out who are the music lovers or who are the people who like to listen to music. And we found out that, okay, two of our users like iTunes, probably they are iTunes users. So we can have some sort of data discovery too going, going further. And the second example is that if there are other, like if there are multiple users using one version, which, is, which can be illustrated as a common version. Okay, so we have talked about how we model that in financial data information into a graph model. So let's see how that can be used for some clustering or can be used for some visualization. So the input of this visualization which has been created on G3 is the same graph. So here we have picked the, the top four categories which is food and dining, shopping, entertainment and travel. So the big solid blue bubbles are the main parent categories and the white bubbles are actually the subcategories and in that subcategories we have the actual merchants. If you look at this slide, so the big bubble on the left says that it's clothing, books, electronics and software. So this means this belongs to the shopping category, the main category. And if I drill down more into the into the clothing cluster, I can see the machines have a bigger bubble. So that means the frequency of users using machines is more than a gap, salvo, and marshes. So probably that's that's depicting like like women like us, we usually prefer to shop at Macy's, so that's kind of depicting that. And so we can use this graph database and we can put it, plug it into different visualization tools and get insights. So uh, my partner Lulu, she will be explaining how to use different visualization tools which has the same input as GraphDB and to draw some uh, time series based uh, spending pattern analysis and some demographic analysis. So, Thanks. Um, thanks, Neha. So now I'll talk about how we can derive better insights from a more generic information from our data. We have a lot of the, um, information from our financial transaction data, like um, the category of the transaction, the amount, um, the user's location, the um, transaction date. And from a business perspective, we always want to derive, analyze, and solve the problem as soon as possible. Um, and we can use some net numbers or stats to do this, but sometimes it's not that intuitive. Before some further exploratory data analysis, we can do a visualization first, so that we can have a better visual communication to see the patterns and connections in the data that really matters for us. And then I will show two examples for how we visualize our financial transactions. And the first one is the time series visualization. Like from this graph, we are trying to show like how our users spend their income last year. Um, so we can easily see that these users spend most of their income in food and dining and shopping. And like for other categories, there are different patterns for it. So let's just take a look at the travel category. Um, we can guess that this might be a student who spent a lot, much more money in January and February and in June, and that is the, the winter and summer vacations for them. But if we look at the entertainment, this will tell a totally different story. The trend is very consistent throughout the year. And it also makes sense since a lot of people, they have the subscriptions for newspapers, magazines, and something like Netflix. So it's very consistent throughout the year. <coughs> Um, by using time series analysis, we can just um, have a better view of how our users behave. And then we can also have a geographic visualization like this. Um, and it's trying to show the top ca spending category um, in the US by states. And um, we have a lot of ca categories like food and dining, home, shopping, transportation, and travel. And it's very red in this picture. Um, so we can say that like people spend most of their income in their rent or house. And also we can drill down to the county level, and it's too colorful in this map. Sometimes it's really hard for us to derive some um, really important in information. So why not just pick one state and leave out other states? Since we're in Bay Area now, let's just choose California. So in this map, it's 
pretty red in Bay Area since the house is so expensive and the renting fee is so high here. And also like, in San Francisco, you can see a green that is the shopping category. And then um, in the South California, it's red too. So using this kind of visualization, we can just keep what information we really want instead of the, all the information in the database. So in summary, um, we talked about how we can do the data modeling using graph database and how we visualize our information in a time series method and demographic method. And then we can better enhance the user experience using like graph data model and analysis.